In this video, we are going to apply what we learned in the double side band suppressed carrier modulation on an example called tone modulation. And this example, tone modulation, in general means that our message, our voice, is assumed to be a single tone, a cosine wave itself. So this is our information signal. This is the message. This is the base band signal. We assume it to be cosine. I know it might be confusing that the carrier is cosine and the message is also cosine, but the carrier is cosine omega ct with a high frequency. This is the carrier. We assume that it has a high frequency. While our message is cosine also, but with a low frequency. Okay. So uh, our signal. Uh, is a cosine wave that looks like this in the time domain. Cosine wave with a low frequency. This is the time domain of our signal. In the frequency domain, what is the spectrum? The spectrum of our signal M is two deltas, one delta at omega M and minus omega M. And the area is phi. So this is our signal, our message in the time domain and the frequency domain. Now, when we use double side band suppressed carrier, we are going to multiply our m of t times the cosine omega ct times the carrier, right? So phi of t, phi of t will be m of t cosine omega ct <coughs> which is cosine omega m t times cosine omega ct which can be written using again the identities uh, it can be written as half cosine the sum plus half cosine the difference so we can write it as half cosine omega c plus omega m t plus half cosine the difference omega c minus omega m t and then, let's try to have some insight about how this signal looks like in the time domain and in the frequency domain. In the time domain, again, it's a cosine wave, cosine omega ct, it's a cosine wave, whose amplitude is changing as a cosine wave. So, in the time domain, if you want to plot phi of t, We'll find that it's a cosine wave which is the high frequency carrier, but its amplitude is changing as also cosine. So the amplitude is changing like m of t. It's a cosine wave. So we are going to plot it as a cover here. And then we plot also the reflected cover, because as we said before, the cosine wave, if its positive amplitude is changing with a certain value, then the negative amplitude will change with the same value. So we are going to plot the negative cover. And then we plot our carrier inside. We plot our carrier. So this is the carrier cosine omega ct, okay? With amplitude changing according to m of t. This is how our signal looks like in the time domain. What about the frequency domain? The frequency domain can be calculated in two ways. The first way, we know that when we multiply any signal times cosine, then the spectrum is going to shift right, shift left, and you divide over 2. So this spectrum of M is going to shift right around omega C, shift left around negative omega C, and you divide over 2. Or you can obtain it from here, from this expression. This is half cosine. It will appear in the frequency domain as 2 deltas with pi over 2, pi delta plus pi delta, and you have half here, so 2 deltas with area pi over 2. And this design also will appear as two deltas, so you get eventually four deltas. You can do it in any way, and both of them are supposed to give you the same result exactly. So if we do it using the regular way, we have a signal multiplied by cosine, then the spectrum should look like this. The spectrum of M should be shifted to the right, shifted to the left, and divided over two. So it will be shifted to the right around on C shifted to the left around negative omega c and here if the area was pi it will be pi over 2 pi over 2 pi over 2 pi over 2 what is this now this is pi of omega the frequency domain of phi 
but like n times cosine, you shift right, you shift left, and you divide over two. You shift by how much? By the frequency of the cosine. The frequency of the cosine is omega c. So you shift to omega c and negative omega c. So this is how our signals look like in the time domain and the frequency. Let's go to the demodulator. In the demodulator, we are going to multiply again 5 times cosine. We receive 5 we multiply it again times cosine. So E of t, our signal E of t, will be M of t multiplied by cosine squared. Right? So it will be cosine omega m t multiplied by cosine squared omega c t. And cosine squared can be written as half 1 plus cosine double the angle. Then this will give you half cosine omega mt plus half cosine omega mt multiplied by cosine 2 omega ct. Let's think about the spectrum of this E of t. The spectrum of this E of t, you can obtain it again in many ways. You can obtain it from this expression, mathematically from this expression, this is a cosine omega mt, so it will give you two deltas, let's do it quickly. We give you two deltas at omega m and minus omega m with pi over 2, pi over 2. <coughs> this is cosine omega m t similar to this, but multiplied by cosine 2 omega c t. So when you multiply this times cosine 2 omega c t, you take the spectrum of this, you shift it right around 2 omega c, you shift it left around minus 2 omega c and then uh, there will be pi over 2 pi over 2 and there is a half here it will be pi over 4 pi over 4 pi over 4 pi over 4 this is a quick I, I'll leave it to you to do from the expression but we can do it in another way by looking at phi phi this is the spectrum of phi we are going to multiply phi by cosine omega ct what happens if you multiply a signal by cosine omega ct? You shift it right, you shift it left, and you divide it by 2. So you will shift the whole spectrum of phi right around omega c. You shift the whole spectrum of phi left around negative omega c, and then you divide it by 2. Right? Because again, we multiply phi times cosine omega ct. So you shift right around omega c, you shift the whole spectrum of phi left around negative omega c, and you divide it by 2. Let's do that. So if you take the whole spectrum of phi and you shift it right, right around omega c, what do you get? You will shift everything right around omega c. This omega c will be 2 omega c because we shifted right 2 omega c. So omega c will be 2 omega c. So, so here around 2 omega c you will get 1 delta, 1 delta. And you divide over 2 by over 4 pi over 4 and this negative omega c when you shift it right when you shift it right by omega c it will become 0 so you will get here around 0 you will get 2 deltas pi over 4 pi over 4 so now we shifted the whole spectrum right by omega c and we will shift the whole spectrum left by omega c left so this negative omega c will become negative 2 omega c Right? And we get two deltas beside pi over 4. Why pi over 4? Because we shift and we divide over 2. And this omega c, when we shift it left, by omega c, it will become 0. So we we'll get two other deltas here around the 0. Around the 0, we we'll get two other deltas. So pi over 2 will become pi over, uh, pi over 4 will become pi over 2. This pi over 4 will become pi over 2 because we had two deltas from the shift right, and we got another two deltas from the shift left. They will add together, and we will get pi over 2 and pi over 2. So this is the spectrum after we multiply at the receiver, after we multiply by cosine. This is the spectrum of E. This is the spectrum of E of omega. And then, if you pass this through a low mass filter, 
If you pass this through an O-pass filter, what you get? You get two deltas, these two deltas, at omega m and minus omega m, okay, with pi over 2 and pi over 2, which is what? What is this? This is half m of omega. This is half m of omega in the frequency domain, which is in the time domain what? In the time domain it's half m of t. So you will get exactly your original signal, but multiplied by half. So now we applied, we applied the double side band suppressed carrier modulation to something called tone modulation, where our information signal is cosine itself, which in the frequency domain appears as two deltas. We saw that in the modulator, this is the signal that we are going to transmit. In the receiver, we are going to apply the signal by cosine again, so it will be shifted right, shifted left, and you divide over two. This is what we get if we pass through a low pass filter, you get half M of T again. We'll stop here in this video and see you in the next video.